Here's a quick video about this, the TechPel DCM043. And as you can see, with nothing going through it, it's reading 0 0.630 DC amps. Now, there is a zero button here, and you can press it, and that will show you differential amperage. That is, the difference between when there's nothing going through it at all and when you have something going through the clamp. But that's not really what I wanted. I wanted it to show zero when there was nothing flowing through it at all. This is the way it showed up for me from Amazon, and I assume from the manufacturer, and before I returned it, I wanted to see if I could fix this myself. So here's how I went about doing that. First thing you need is some sort of power supply where you can supply DC voltage with a variable current limit, and uh, another thing that's helpful is to have an independent multimeter that can also measure current so that you can check this meter against two different uh, measurements as you're making adjustments. Now, neither of these are a true voltage reference or anything like a laboratory level, calibration level tool, but for what I'm doing, it'll get it a lot closer than it came from the manufacturer with. So the other thing that you'll need is some sort of load. I'm using these resistors. This is a two ohm, 100 watt uh, resistor that I can use as just a dummy load. And two ohm is pretty handy because I can just set my power supply at 10 volts and that will supply five amps. Uh, through the 2 ohm resistor and this is capable of going up to about 10 amps. This is a pretty cool clamp meter because it does measure pretty low currents at DC down to 1 milliamp theoretically but uh, you need something to test it against so that's what I'm going to use the resistor and the power supply for. So instead of using this resistor bare because it's only rated at 100 watts when it's being uh, able to sink some of that heat somewhere else. I've just got this piece of aluminum with a, another one attached to it. So I'll be using this as my heat sink. Let me hook things up here. So you can see there's an arrow here on the side. And that's saying from positive to negative. That's the direction it needs to travel. So in this case, we want to hand, we want to go from positive to negative. That's through here. So now you can see what it's going to read on the screen. Still showing about 0.63 amps. And I'll set this, it's already set to 10 volts, and the current limit is at 5.1 amps. That happens to be the maximum of this uh, little variable power supply I've got built into an ATX power supply from a computer. So I'll just flip it on now and we'll see what we get to start. Excuse the fan sounds, but there we go. We've got right around five amps. In fact, let's dial that back. We'll, uh, we'll put the current limit down just a little bit, just to make sure we get truly five amps on the money. There we are, there's exactly five amps according to this meter. And what do we have on here? 5.6, no, it depends, but it changes around, but about 5.630 amps. In other words, the base level current that it's always reading is just being added on top to the actual uh, current that's flowing through it. Now we could use the differential mode here, and we could turn off the current, set this to the uh, differential zero, which is not a true zero, and hit the power on again, and I bet it'll show us five amps, and it does, 5.007, that's not bad. But again, I don't wanna use this differential button every time. I wanna see a true zero when there's zero current flowing through it. So let's turn off the power supply and I'll show you how I can adjust this. If you open up the back, you'll find a series of different, very small potentiometers. The ones we're interested in are this one and this one. And you need a very specific screwdriver, it turns out, a flat blade screwdriver and uh, you have to find one that's just the right size. I've tried messing with these with one that's uh, just a little bit undersized and it really doesn't work. These pots really need something that just barely fits in there uh, to rotate them back and forth and the adjustment is really, really, really fine. You have to make super tiny little adjustments on these to make it work. This one on the left side, this is your zero. This one on the right side, this is what you trim for some current above zero. So what I'll be doing is setting this initially to zero with nothing flowing through it. And then I'll put, up a, I'll put on the uh, five amp uh, dummy load again, and I'll turn this pot until I see five amps going through it. This is about a 10 amp capable DC clamp meter, so five amps seems like a good place to, uh, to set that calibration at but you could use it at two and a half amps or wherever the range is that you're most commonly measuring if you really wanted to dial in for ultimate precision. At the end of the day, this is a Hall effect sensor. It's going to have a little bit of variance to it no matter what you do. If you want a really, really precise measurement of DC, you're better off using a shunt. But in this case, I'm going to set it to five amps so it's about correct for the middle of the range. 
So to do that, I'm gonna start by adjusting the zero point, and you can see I've still got it in the DC amperage range. I'll turn it over and use my screwdriver to position the blade just in the inside this left side pot here. While keeping that in place, I'm going to rotate until I can turn that down to zero, and that's actually a clockwise position. I'm rotating very slowly because the update isn't super fast. And as I rotate that clockwise, we're coming up on zero amps. Went past it a little bit, now we're in negative range, so I'm gonna bring it back. And you can see just very, very, very fine movements are needed here, and there's right about zero. Zero, I might even be happy with uh, zero, zero, two. It's pretty tricky to get it right on, and even if you get it there, it's likely to uh, change a little bit as you move the meter around, and uh, certainly the back is open right now, and it doesn't have the shielding, that sort of thing. So what I'm trying to say is temper your expectations. You're in the milliamp range. Let's call that zero right there. It may flutter a little bit, but I'm gonna leave it right there. So now that zero has been established, with this left side pot. Now we need to uh, trim up the right side pot for a known current level. So to do that, I'm gonna turn on the power supply again to exactly 5.000 amps, according to this meter. And I'll put the clamp around the positive line again. And you can see right now we're reading 5.062. Let's do a zero check again. It's a pretty decent zero. So I'll put it back on the line, happy with the zero pot measurement. Now we're gonna measure, or now we're gonna adjust the, the, uh, the upper current pot. This is extra tricky, because I need to get the blade into this right side pot, and there's a lot of things around there that I really don't wanna to touch with my metal screwdriver. So I'm gonna position that in there, and then, with the position in the pot, now I'm just going to adjust again until I get that right to zero, or excuse me, right to 5.00. In this case, I need to go down, so I'm actually turning counterclockwise. And I'll just turn it down until I hit 5.000, or as close as I can get to it. Again, gotta make really slow movements because the update isn't instant. So there's a little bit of delay after making a change and then seeing it on the screen. Overshot it a little bit. Maybe one more little tweak. Too much. There we go, I'm pretty happy with that. 5.001, kind of ranging between uh, just under five to just over five. And uh, I think that's a, probably about as good as I'm gonna be able to get it. Okay, so we're at five when the power's on, and you can see it's moving up to 5010 now. And uh, we'll turn off the power, and we'll see it go back down to zero when there's nothing going through it. So now we have an initial measurement, or excuse me, an initial calibration from zero to five amps. So, Obviously, I've only tuned it for one uh, power supply uh, measurement, so let's test it with a second measurement and to see how well we're doing. To do that, I'm gonna bring in my, just uh, my basic volt ohms meter. I'm gonna connect the positive supply from the power supply to the positive input, and then the negative side of the meter is gonna go into the same uh, dummy load, my two ohm, 100 watt wire round I believe it's called resistor. We'll set this to the amp range. Put the meter back on here just as before. So now the only difference is we've got two different screens to look at, well, three total. And we'll just do our best to see if they all match up and I can make little tweaks to the uh, clamp meter here if I wish. So I'll turn the power back on. Now we have some extra resistance in the circuit here now. So even though my current limit is set to, I'll go to the maximum of 5.1 uh, amps on this uh, variable power supply, that's the max of uh, the power supply, but given the resistance of these little wires, we're only able to achieve, it looks like about 4.666 amps. 4.668, uh, 669, let's see if it goes to 4.67. 
Yeah, 4.67 amps on this meter and 4.68 on the other. Let's uh, go ahead and lock it down to that so it doesn't move around on us. Let's just set it to 4.6 amps. Okay, so 4.6 amps according to this meter, 4.619 or 4.62 on this meter. And you can see we're at 4.57 uh, 4 on the uh, clamp meter. So I think we can do a little bit better than that. Using these two references, I'm gonna say that's right around 4.61 if I had to say I'm in between the two. So I'll just give it one little additional tweak. And the idea is just to set it in between the two measurements I have available. We're really not far off. There we go, let's set it there. So 4.61 on the clamp meter, 4.63 on the trusty old Radio Shack uh, multimeter, and four point, right around 4.6 on the uh, power supply. This is basically in the halfway point between the two different uh, measuring devices I have right now. So now I've basically got a clamp meter that's set up to go all the way to zero and there really is no current flowing through it and up to the current that is measuring uh, calibrated to be correct right around the center of the range. Here I'm setting it to three amps just as a sanity check. We'll go exactly three on this meter. That's 3.02 over here and 3.018 on the clamp meter. We're just right in the middle of those two readings. So that's an easy way to calibrate these uh, nice little TechPel DCM043 clamp meters. There's a couple other pots that are on the back here as well. There's one over here on the right side of the battery pack and then two at the base. I have a feeling those have to do with voltage adjustment or perhaps the AC adjustment uh, for uh, current. But you can plug in the uh, uh, the two uh, banana plugs here and measure voltage. I've tested those. Uh, they do not change as you change these two upper pots. Here's a quick demo of that voltage measurement. I've got it on DC volts and I'll set this up to uh, 10 volts. Let's make it even a little bit higher. Let's go up to uh, 15 volts on the meter here, 14.99. Here I'm reading between 14.9 and 15. We only get one a digit of precision on the right side of the decimal point there. This is not a super high precision voltage meter, but it does really great on the current side, so I'm happy with it. As a bonus, if you did want to measure a differential voltage, you can zero it here. That gives you zero. Let's set the voltage on the power supply up to, well, let's scroll away to 50 volts. So we set it at 15. Uh, the differential voltage between 15 and 50 is 35 volts. So that's what I wanted to show you so far. Pretty easy adjustment on here. Unfortunately, it doesn't come exactly right on from the factory, but it's a pretty simple uh, tuning that you can do at home. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.